morning, everyone. Thanks for coming for this talk. Um, I am Ganesh Raju. I'm a technical lead for the big data team in, at uh, Linaro. So this talk is going to have two sections. The first section, we are going to do a small demo, um, basically showing how a city can use its own data and utilize it for doing some machine learning and uh, things like that. Um, it's going to utilize, use ODPI, spec-based native Hadoop, Apache Spark, H2O, and sparkling water uh, to do the demo. And then the second section will be more on the Hadoop and uh, the big data benchmarks. Um, benchmarks for Hadoop, Spark, and anything to uh, with um, uh, the big data itself. So in the first section, um, it's a demo. Uh, like I said, it's going to have um, ODPI-based Hadoop. ODPI is a standards body where you have different Hadoop distros and ISVs come together uh, to standardize Hadoop. Uh, if you see uh, in today's um, uh, Hadoop ecosystem, you have various distros available, and each distro, they uh, package all these open source components, and there's a lot of them. and um, the problem is they don't have a proper standardization. Now one distro goes with a particular version that, and the same, same kind of a tool in a different distro could be a different uh, version of it. So for, for an enterprise or for an end user, when they uh, go with a particular distro, they get logged in, they may have problems if for, for say if they want to upgrade any particular um, component of the big data they get stuck with the uh, distro provided um, uh, the package. So that's why ODPI is collaborating with companies like IBM, Pivotal, um, SAS, um, Infosys. So I think there are about 30 so member companies working together to um, on a common goal to standardize Hadoop in, uh, or any big data in, uh, platform. And also um, since uh, you spend less time in testing and less time in the configurations and fixing things. It reduces cost and reduces the complexity for the enterprise, for the end users. Um, what ODP also provides is a cross compatibility. That what that means is every distro who wants to, uh, who is part of uh, ODPI, they can get certified uh, from ODPI. Um, so ODPI, ODPI provides some test suites that they can run and they can certify. And what that provides for the end user enterprises, uh, cross compatibility, they can go with one distro. Later on, they want to switch and go uh, switch to another distro, they can do that. So right now, um, ODPI has two tracks. Um, it has a runtime track and the operations. In the runtime, you have the classic Hadoop components, Hadoop um, HDFS, MapReduce, and Yarn. Uh, on the operations, uh, right now we are looking at Apache Ambari. Um, we are working on version two of the ODPI spec, uh, and it, um, it is in the alpha stage, and it will be uh, releasing pretty soon. Um, Linaro is obviously a member of ODPI, and I am personally uh, a member of the technical steering committee for that. So for this demo, we will be using native Hadoop uh, version 2.7, that uh, following the ODPI specifications. And we'll also use Apache Spark. Apache Spark is an in-memory processing, uh, data processing engine. Uh, it provides development APIs for you know, um, doing SQL workloads on big data, um, also uh, streaming uh, APIs for big data. And it also has machine learning algorithms built in into it. You know, in, the Spark was actually created as an alternative for Hadoop MapReduce because MapReduce was a batch processing and it was pretty slow. So they wanted to bring in interactive processing, and that's the, that's the main goal of Apache Spark, is to uh, provide a fast and interactive processing. 
And you can use Java, Scala, or Python for coding um, in Spark. So this demo will also use uh, Spark that would be running on top of ODPI-based Hadoop, and it will use uh, Hadoop's Yarn as the resource manager. So we will have a cluster of uh, three nodes for this demo, and um, we'll have Spark running on top of ODPI. And then we'll also use uh, H2O Sparkling Water, which will be running on top of Spark. <coughs> H2O is uh, uh, an in-memory, uh, user-friendly machine learning API. Um, it is compatible with Hadoop. It can run standalone or it can run on top of uh, Spark. Um, the reason that uh, we are using H2O Sparkling Water on top of Spark is Spark is very good in you know, fast, interactive data processing. And H2O is very, uh, gives, provides a very user-friendly uh, um, machine learning APIs. And both uh, Spark and H2O, they work uh, well integrated. Spark has this uh, concept of RDDs and data frames to have the data in their memory, and H2O ha has something called H2O frame. So you can load data into Spark's RDDs or data frame and then uh, move it uh, to H2O frame, and you can even load it to H2O frame and bring it back to RDDs. Um, one caveat is, um, you know, H2O uses the same memory of the Spark and the same executors. So if you are loading your data into a Spark's RDD or a data frame and then converting into a H2O frame, there is no penalty. But if you're doing the other way around, if you're having H2O frame, um, the data loaded into H2O frame and you want to convert into a Spark, um, there, there's a copy that is made of the memory. So you may have a little bit penalty hit. Um, H2O uh, comes with uh, a visual, uh, visualization UI, a web UI. It's called H2O Flow. Um, basically, uh, that's a very user-friendly way for you to choose various machine learning algorithms and uh, easy way for you to build models on the data. And then you can apply the uh, machine learning algorithms and do predictive analysis. So with that, we'll uh, get into the demo. Again, this demo is based, uh, it's going to be in a three node cluster. Uh, it will have Hadoop 2.7, Spark 1.6, built with Scala 2.10. Um, we didn't uh, deliberately build it with 2.11 uh, because there is a um, known bug in sparkling water uh, with one of the machine learning um, algorithms. And these uh, node, the cluster of node is running on the developer cloud. Uh, thanks to the SDI team, um, it's all running in the ARM-based hardware on the developer cloud. And this all has been independently uh, built and compiled on ARM and uh, tested. So we're going to get uh, d data, which is pretty much open uh, from some of the cities. They uh, we're going to collect the open data that they have exposed, and then it is going to be stored in HDFS, and it will be read uh, through Apache Spark in, and converted into Apache Spark RDD, and then H2O will read from there and convert it to uh, H2O frame, and then we'll look at the H2O flow, the web UI, and we'll uh, build a model and apply some machine learning algorithm on it. Um, so I got the uh, Hadoop and Spark and Sparkling Water installed into it. Um, so lack of time, I have also loaded the data into the HDFS. 
So let me go ahead and start. The spark. So what this has done is it has created one master node and two worker nodes. The Spark driver will be running on the master and the executors will be running on the worker nodes. And now I'm creating the sparkling cell which is a cell um, where you can put in your uh, H2O commands. And while that is going on, I can show you the developer cloud instances that we are using. Uh, is These are the nodes, big data one, two, and three. And Spark comes, also comes with a web UI to see the master and worker nodes. So this is the master, um, the web UI to see that. You can see that there's one master and two worker. And by default, they get exposed through 8080, port 8080. And you can also, while you can also uh, see the Spark jobs and how they are running. And that gets exposed through uh, port 4040. And here you can see that the Spark is up and running and the executors are up. And uh, these are the different stages the job goes through. And this is the H2O flow, uh, web UI, it's still loading up, okay. So you can see here, like I said, you know, it provides an easy way for you to um, build models and, and there's model menu there, now you can select uh, machine learning algorithms on it, so we'll go over the data set. So I'm selecting a data that New York City has exposed. New York City has these bikes that they have placed um, all around the city for the people to rent and then they can drive. So this data has uh, the, rent, the information about, you know, people, what time they rent, how many miles they ride on that bike, how frequently they ride it, and um, how long they rent it for, you know, for a day or some, you know, a week. So we just imported that into H2O, and you can parse this file. When you do the parse, it, it kicks off jobs behind the scene, and that's run in this part. You can see the job that progressed. And you can view the data getting parsed. This is the data that is parsed. And if you want to see actual data, you can click on the view data itself. And you can see here uh, the date and time and uh, the trips that they had made the, in the last uh, 24 hours. That's the total trips and the miles traveled in a day and how many people uh, were renting it. So you can use this data, now go and create a model Uh, to create a model, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to first split the data into 80% and 20%. 80% is to train and 20% is to test. So 
So we split the data now into 80% and 20%. The whole data gets split into two sections, 80% of the data and 20% of the data. And now you can go and build a model. And you can choose an algorithm. Um, I'm going to select generalized linear modeling. And for this model, now I'll uh, say use the data, 80% data, to train and to validate, use the 20% data. So that builds the model. And you can actually save this model. And if you have new data, you can use the same model, uh, which is already trained. And you can use that to do the predictive analysis. You can see the uh, model. And you can it shows a graph also. And if you want to do the predict, uh, predictive analysis, you just click the predict. And you can select the model and click on predict. So we, we um, at the big data team, so we've been working on quite a lot of uh, synthetic workloads and small workloads that comes with uh, the micro benchmarking workloads that comes with the Hadoop. Now we are going into the next stage of you know, looking at real world data and, the, and uh, even benchmarking against it. So that also leads me to the next section. So we're going to talk about um, the benchmarks, why we need benchmark, what are the different types of benchmarks uh, that's out there for big data. And we are going to go into each one of them and give an overview of them. And we, we worked on quite a lot of benchmarking last few weeks. Um, and we, we will go over what those benchmarks are for and what, what kind of metrics they give out and uh, what are the issues that uh, we have faced. And these are specific for ARM. So obviously, so we saw this demo. So uh, we know that there's quite a lot of potential for big data. So a lot of, uh, uh, there's a lot of interest, you know, a lot of people talking about smart cities and there's a lot of open data available. A lot of people are starting to combine data and you know, like in the previous demo, you could use multiple data sets and use Spark SQL and start combining and look at machine learning. So there is a lot of potential. So that also leads the, to that there are so much variety of data, right? There's different types of solutions that you can come up with with the machine learning. Um, so, but how do you, um, how do you, um, uh, benchmark between how do, you, how do you differentiate between a particular solution with another solution. So we definitely need some kind of benchmark from, from a hardware perspective and also from a software perspective. Um, and also, you know, big data, uh, there's, there's, the data is growing in a very rapid phase and the types of data that is also, are, you know, you know are very diverse. You have data, you know, huge petabytes of data someplace sitting and you want to analyze. And you may have data for coming from search engines, you want to index that. You may have uh, data that is coming through as a streaming data. You may have data warehousing data where you may want to do a uh, lot of reads and writes. You want to do filtering of data and things like that. And you may want to do machine learning. Um, so there's quite a lot of data and it's growing. So it becomes more and more important on why we need benchmarking. So now 
With benchmarking, there are you know, various types. You, know, you can have micro benchmarks that comes along with the Hadoop itself for you know, sorting and grab and work, uh, word count and terasort and things like that. Um, there is also component uh, benchmarks for each component that you can do and application level benchmarks. So I'd like to ask Nares to uh, come over and you know, uh, explain over some of the benchmarks. Um, he'll go give an overview and go uh, in depth into each one of them. Okay. Um, we have actually a uh, big data team sit together and we have listed a couple of uh, benchmarks. Uh, first thing is this is uh, micro, benchmark, micro benchmark. So this benchmark actually metrics uh, like execution time and throughput resource utilization. Okay. And uh, the uh, high bench DFS IO and AMP layer, uh, these are the three micro benchmarks. Uh, workloads are like uh, for high bench, uh, sort, word count, terra sort, and uh, page rank, k means page classification, and index. Um, and for DFSIO, uh, it's a generate and read, write, append, and uh, uh, remove the data for uh, MapReduce jobs. AMP lab uh, benchmarks uh, workloads are like part of uh, uh, Calda workloads. So uh, this micro benchmarks basically used for testing uh, Hadoop, Hive, and uh, uh, TZZ uh, stacks, software stacks. Uh, next one is uh, uh, TPC. Uh, benchmarks. Uh, we have like considered the three benchmarks, TPCXHS, TPCH, and TPCDS. Uh, for these uh, workloads are uh, uh, like HS uh, generator, uh, we'll go in detail uh, these benchmarks later. Uh, then data warehousing operations and uh, decision supports. Like this, uh, for these benchmarks, metrics are like performance, price, and energy. Or like execution time and throughput uh, are the uh, for the uh, TPCH and TPCDS benchmark benchmarks. And the software stacks uh, are. Uh, Hadoop, Hive, and Pig uh, for this testing, you can use this. Next one is like uh, synthetic benchmarks. Uh, swim, grid mix, pig mix, MR bench. Uh, the most of these benchmarks it comes with uh, uh, Hadoop, actually. When you install Hadoop, uh, it will be a, in the examples. Uh, uh, of the Hadoop jar file. So big data bench is also a, uh, uh, in the, uh, you'll get it when you install the Hadoop. Uh, this uh, matrix is throughput, memory, and CPU uh, are, uh, we can use it for the uh, uh, benchmarking this. And uh, software stacks are like Hadoop uh, and uh, um, HBase in Pal. Lot of things will be covered in the big data bench actually. Hadoop benchmarks and uh, uh, test tool. Like as I told like Hadoop, uh, Distribution comes with a lot of benchmarks, number of benchmarks. Uh, test DFS IO, NN bench, uh, MR bench, uh, then Terra, Terra Gen, Terra Sort, Terra Validate. Uh, uh, you, can, you can check the uh, different uh, benchmarks with the below commands actually. Uh, uh, while running these benchmarks, you can use the time command so that uh, 
uh, the example uh, snapshot, like output will be like that, uh, where only really, uh, you'll get the metrics actually. Uh, this is a, a sample example. Okay, uh, TerraSort, Terra, TerraGen, TerraSort, and TerraValidate. Uh, basically, uh, TerraGen generates the data set and uh, uh, TerraSort uh, runs, uh, runs on the input data. Validate will validate the uh, generated data, actually. Uh, the, uh, actually, we did run this uh, benchmark and uh, uh, you can have a look into a uh, wiki page, how to compile and configure and run these kind of benchmarks on ARM64 architecture. Highbench actually contains a nine mm, typical Hadoop and Spark workloads uh, and uh, uh, sort, word count, terra sort, HDFSIO, et cetera. And it uses actually uh, uh, Zlib compression for input and output. Uh, uh, there are actually uh, uh, lack of AR64 bits and lack of documentation uh, how to uh, configure, build, and run this benchmark actually. So you can you can have a look into uh, our wiki page what we had created, uh, how to do this stuff actually. Yes, DFSIO, uh, it's a part of Hadoop MapReduce client job, job client. Uh, uh, you will get this benchmark when you install the Hadoop on your system. So uh, basically, it tests the uh, new node and uh, data node, uh, and it helps to discover the bottlenecks uh, in your network. Uh, uh, when you run this benchmark, uh, you can use the, uh, you can first write it and then uh, read, uh, followed by read. Uh, so this is how this benchmark will work actually. And the results are stored in the uh, test DFSIO uh, results log file. Uh, you can use uh, RS file for the, uh, to use a different file name or something like that. Hive test bench is like uh, based on uh, TPCH and TPCDS benchmark. Um, to experiment the uh, Apache Hive um, on any data scale actually. Uh, it contains the uh, data generator and that, uh, set of data queries. Just uh, the basic Hive performance uh, on large data sets. Uh, we did run this benchmark and uh, we have created a wiki page for the same. Map reduce benchmark. Uh, what it does is basically uh, uh, loops a small number of, uh, uh, like a small job number of times um, and checks whether it runs, uh, uh, are, uh, the job runs are very responsive or not. Uh, running efficiently on your, uh, on your cluster. Um, it puts a focus on map reduce layer as its impact of HDFS layer very limited, okay? The test command is like uh, to run the 50 uh, uh, small uh, run. And the exemplary output is, uh, uh, you can see. NN bench uh, and NN bench without uh, map reduce. A load and testing uh, name node for continuous read, write, rename, and delete operation, uh, delete operations on small files. Uh, uh, this does actually kind of a uh, like a stress test. So if you run this benchmark, uh, it will check whether uh, you are name node cluster is um, uh, 
the the sample command is uh, below test command and uh, uh, if you want to run the uh, nn bench uh, benchmark uh, uh, with radius uh, you can use the uh, option hyphen reduce uh, and maps uh, if you don't want to run uh, i mean nn bench without mr you can use uh, you can remove all those those features TPC is a uh, TPC benchmark. TPC is a, as we told, it's a uh, one body, uh, uh, standard body. Uh, we try to run the TPC uh, HS benchmark, and we are currently facing some issues uh, with uh, configuration. Uh, uh, we didn't run TPC H DS and uh, TPC C benchmarks. Um, uh, we'll uh, try to do it in upcoming days as well. Uh, DPCH uh, focus of the ad hoc queries, and the TPCDS is uh, the standard benchmark for decision support. Um, TPCC is a uh, online transaction uh, OLTP benchmark actually. Uh, TPCXHS benchmark. So X is for uh, Express and H is for Hadoop and uh, S is for Sort. It comes with, uh, as a kit, and uh, it contains uh, a script uh, uh, to execute the benchmark. Uh, and uh, <coughs> Java code to execute the benchmark load, actually. So execution, uh, this is how you need to do the execution, actually. Um, uh, a valid run consists of five separate uh, phases, actually. So with all of their execution. The benchmark test uh, consists of two runs, uh, run with lower and run, run with higher uh, TPCXHS performance uh, metrics. And uh, no configuration or tuning changes or uh, rebooting of your uh, system. Uh, this is not allowed in between uh, uh, while doing this benchmark actually. Okay, let's see the difference between TPC A, uh, and spec models. Uh, TPC is actually a specification based uh, model. Spec model is a kit based one. Uh, here actually in TPC model performance, price, energy uh, uh, in one benchmark. And here in spec model, uh, the performance uh, and energy in a separate benchmark. TPC is end to end, and uh, a spec model is uh, a server centric. TPC model executes actually multiple tests, uh, spec model executes a single test at a time. Uh, TPC model follows the independent review and uh, uh, spec model is a summary disclosure actually. Uh, TPC is a technology conference and uh, like spec model is a research group actually. Big bench, Ganesh, uh, you want to cover this? Okay, uh, Big Bench is a suite of uh, benchmarking suite, uh, uh, benchmarking tools. Um, it actually borrows from various other uh, benchmarking uh, suite, all, uh, including TPC, some of the micro benchmarking, and it takes s some of the workloads from them and it has added its own workload. So, right, and it is evolving quite a bit. It has worked f by Cloudera and Intel and there is a lot of academic uh, uh, interest in this. So this is evolving a lot. This is one of the you know, main standards in big data uh, benchmarking. Um, only thing is it focuses mainly on uh, structured data, um, less on unstructured data. So uh, next is Spark Bench. Uh, Spark Bench is a specific, more specific to Apache Spark. Um, 
you know, we currently are working on it. Um, we are having few issues uh, in um, um, testing it, running the workloads. We were able to build it on ARM, but uh, when we run uh, example workloads, there is a kill signal that is getting uh, called and then it kills it. So we are still debugging it, uh, trying to figure out um, you know, how to do this. Um, obviously, there's a lack of documentation. There's lack of documentation with many other benchmarks in regards to AARC64. Um, so that's why we've been going through each benchmark and we are trying to document everything and put it in the Linaro wiki. So we have links everywhere, so you could uh, go and check it out um, in this. So. And uh, grid mix, and you know, it's a sm uh, bench uh, synthetic benchmark, again, um, focused on MapReduce and HDFS performance. Um, it has load job and sleep job, you know, it kind of, uh, for the load job, it looks at the history logs and loads it. It uses uh, Rumen for that. And sleep job is basically it uh, invokes jobs and puts them into sleep. Um, you can run them in a, run this uh, benchmarking in a stress uh, mode, or you can um, do a replay of the previous one and uh, check how it performs compared to the other. Or you can do a, a serial of benchmarks. Next is pig mix. This is uh, for this in particular to Apache Pig. It's more of a data warehousing um, kind of a performance uh, benchmark. Uh, this uh, swim is another body uh, which provides a benchmark focused on map reduce as well. AMP Lab is uh, UC Berkeley uh, created benchmarking suite. No, uh, it it all, it focuses more on data warehousing tools like Hive, um, Impala, uh, or even uh, Thes. Uh, it also focuses on pipeline data pipeline creation. So uh, it you know you can use that for Apache Spark uh, benchmarking uh, as well. Another suite of product is Big Data Benchmark. Uh, this is different from the Big Benchmark, and this focuses on you know, uh, sequential multi-threaded uh, workloads. Um, with that, uh, these are the links and uh, all the effort that we have put in in running all these benchmarks and figuring out the issues and some of the places we didn't have ARC bits, so we had to compile them and build the ARC bits. And you will have uh, all the information in this, even the ARC bits, the links to them um, will all be in here. With that, uh, this concludes the talk, so I'll open it up for questions if any. So we have the wiki page for the demo also, um, including how to build the Hadoop, native Hadoop, ODPI uh, spec based, and how to build Spark, uh, H2O, sparkling water, uh, and even how to run those demos. Um, you can go and check out the wiki page for that as well. Thank you.